Welcome back to 300 Acre Studios. My name is Mike Luetto, and today I'm starting a brand new series where we do a deep dive into the gear that has been donated to the channel by mixing a song from start to finish using only my sponsor's gear. Now before we go any further, my sponsors are HRK, Singular Audio, Necotronics, Mother Pro Audio, Stam Audio, Bad Dogs Audio, Seventh Circle Audio, RSE Audio, and Make Noise Pro Audio. Now to make this fun, I've set myself a few guidelines. Number one, I'm going as analog as possible, i.e. very little plugins. If I'm using a plugin, I'll let you know where and why. Number two, for no other reason than curiosity, I only use the SM57 to record everything except the bass, which was DI'd. So that's the acoustic, the electrics, the vocals, the drums, all on SM57. Number three and lastly, as some have noticed in my preamp shootouts, I don't record the mics through the preamps when doing shootouts. Normally in a recording session, I would, but I find when doing shootouts, I don't want the color of a mic to embellish a preamp. I want to hear what the preamp by itself is doing to the source. I liken this approach to that of putting a bunch of tracks into like a console made up of said preamps. Saying that, I will be doing future shootouts where I showcase mics into pre's, but for today's video, I won't. So I've got three preamps. Stam Audio 3112 5T, the Seventh Circle Audio N72, and the Bad Dogs Audio P1, which comes with three different options for a sound. Clean, a Jensen Transformer, and a Lundell Transformer. I find it hard to love I find it hard knowing if my friends will most likely break up
find it hard to love I find it hard knowing if my friends will most likely break up Okay, before we deep dive, the P1 with the Jensen Transformer absolutely kicked massive booty when it came to the low end. I loved it. I love the Stam Audio 3112. Kind of resembles the API Pre's, which just have punch. And when that kick comes in in that chorus at the very end, there's no compression, there's no EQ going on. That is purely the 3112 pushing itself through the mix. And lastly, the N72. Oh my goodness, the warmth. Okay, so we've got 15 tracks. I'm gonna go through each individual one and tell you which preamp won and why. So number one, the kick, the 3121. It, it had a punch that cut through more than the others and I really liked it. The middle snare was the P1 with the Lundell Transformer. I don't know, there's something about that lower kind of end to it, really sat it nicely in the mix. Panned hard left and right are the snares, more of the drum roll kind of sound. The N72, it sat them really nice in the mix, which for me was very important because I wanted those parts to be heard, but I didn't want them to be like a focal point. There's a small section in the pre, that was the P1 with the Jensen Transformer. It just brought out that mid to top range, which was really nice. Bass guitar, P1 with the Jensen Transformer. Just, I loved what it did to the low end. All of them had had something really nice with the low end, but there's something about it with the Jensen Transformer in particular that extended it even further, which I thought was really nice. Now we have two Telecaster guitar sounds that are going on. So the main one, well, it was a mix between three. And I'm gonna tell you my thoughts on the three and then which one I chose. So the first one was with the P1 Jensen. What I really liked about this is it just sunk it really nice into the mix. Just It just felt like it was part of this thing. The second option was the N72, which it, it half sunk it into the mix while bringing it out of its shell a bit more, while the 312 made it pop out the most. Now, going back and forth listening to it, I realized that actually I really wanted this guitar bar to pop out as much as possible, so I went with 312. Now there's a lead guitar that's in the background and I went through quite a few different preamps. There's just something about the P1 with the Jensen. It sunk it really snugly behind the main electric guitar part. Towards the end of the song, you'll hear two very distorted guitars kind of doing like a palm mute thing. That's my Strat. I tried a few different variations. Interestingly enough, it really didn't like having the same preamp on the left and the right. So I went with the P1, the clean version, so that's the clean, no transformers, for the right, and then I went for the 312 on the left. 
It really opened up the stereo width, and I really, really like that. Same with the acoustic. So there's three acoustic guitars that are happening, the hard left and the hard right ones. I did a similar thing. I did the 312 on the right and then the N72 on the left. There's just something magical about that. You know, having different preamps on very similar parts, it just really opens it up. For the main acoustic part though, the N72 won really nicely. It just sunk the acoustic really nice into the mix, which for me was a very important part because I, I wanted to hear it, but I didn't want to hear it. Okay, so that brings us lastly to the lead vocal. Now this was a very interesting battle between these different preamps because they all added a really nice character to it. So what I've done is I've got a very short clip, one of the bits where I sing quite hard. I'm gonna show you what each of these different preamps sound like. I hate Genuinely, I'm not entirely sure which one I'm going to use yet. If you think of the vocal performance as four different ranges, you know, the first one is this really soft and quiet. The next one, which we've just heard, super hard. Then the next one is kind of in between. And then the last one is probably the most chillest out of them all. So what I'm probably going to do when I come back and start mixing this is I'm going to choose the best preamp take for each section is what I'm probably going to do because each preamp added a different characteristic that I really liked. Okay, so now I've told you all my favorite preamp takes and which one I like for each instrument and whatnot. So now we're going to listen to everything that I've chosen together and we're we'll compare it against the dry signal. I find it hard to love I find it hard knowing if my friends will most likely break up I hate And there we go. Thank you so much for watching this. Genuinely, it means the world. You know, still a very small uh, fish in a very huge pond. So every subscribe, like, every comment, it means the world to me. So thank you so much. Please stay tuned. In the next episode, we're going to be going through the same exact song, but we're going to be using EQ, compression, saturation. It is going to be so much fun. But for now, thank you and see you next time.